nothing like ushering in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight we're gonna uh, we're gonna do the power panel. You know, I just want to share something with y'all. This this power panel has changed my life. The things that we've talked about up here, the lessons, the scriptures, just the time, the fellowship has changed my life. Talking about integrity, just talking of just 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 forcing me to dig into the word of God more than I do on a normal basis because we all just just hit and miss, do it, and God wants more than that. He wants more than that from us. He wants an intimate, deep, every day. I talk to God every day, all day. I pray every morning, every night, all day. But I feel like I could be doing more. I feel like I could be doing more. I feel like I could be doing more. And uh, that's, that's just a little nugget he gave me. Just I was telling somebody this morning, I said, man, I go through times where I'm running around telling everybody I see at the gas pump and the grocery store and the corner store, hardware store about Jesus. Then I go through times where I feel like I'm just, I don't have anything to say. And he says, man, that's okay. That's a season. He said, that's when you need to step back. That's when you need to press in. That's when you need to refuel, recharge, and then go back out. And I said, all right, praise the Lord. That's what we're going to do. Amen. Hey, we want to, uh, before we get started also too, I'd like to pray, us to pray, touch and agree and pray over Florida is where that storm's going. Does anybody feel the spirit led to pray for safety, protection over Florida? Not everybody at once. Anybody? Who said it? All right, praise the Lord. First lady. I was going to do it, but I don't want to hog the mic. Well, whatever stopped you before. <laughs> Got to watch them preachers, man. That call gets on them. You can't peel the mic away. It's, it's a bad side effect of the, the call, you know. <laughs> All right, y'all, we want to pray and, and think about this. Uh, keep it on your hearts because think of it like we're a coastal state, and I don't know about you, but I would really appreciate somebody remembering me. So we always reap what we sow, so we want to pr sow prayer. You know what I'm saying? So we reap it when we need it. Amen? Because you never know. Two weeks from now, it could be in this way. All right. Father, we just come to you tonight. Miracle Place wants to lift up Florida, Father God. We pray, Father, that, that that Hurricane Helene will start dissipating, Lord God, that instead of gaining speed, it will start dropping. Lord, we pray for your mercy and grace and pray that it will go into areas that don't have people, Lord Jesus. Put it off in fields and whatever, Lord God. We pray for no loss of life for humans or animals, Lord. We pray that you would just, just watch over that whole country coastal line, Lord. I know we're just touching agreeing with those there who are praying so hard right now not to lose their homes, not to, to lose everything that they have, Lord, their furnishings and everything. It's just so, such a challenge, Lord God, to start over. And we understand that here in Louisiana. So we want to pray, Father God, again, that you would just cause those winds and those rains just to dissipate, Father God. And we just pray that it will move fast, Lord God, not linger and dump rain and flood and everything that comes along with the hurricanes and the thereafter. So, Father, we're just seeking you and praying for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, guys. Y'all keep y'all keep praying until this thing's done. Amen. 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 The Bible says, with two or more gathered at touch and agree that he is there in the midst. Amen. All right, guys, like I was saying before, man, it's just an honor and a blessing just to sit with you guys and just fellowship and dig into the Word of God and just testify and, and just talk about real life things in this place. Um, tonight, we're just basically going to talk about um, what our relationship with God, how it has affected our, our marriage, our, our relationship with our children, uh, our wives, work, etc. If you don't have wives, you don't have children, you can apply it to, you know, the, the necessary areas. But I'm going to start with... Um, you know, last week we talked about marriage, and man, this is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. I mean, you can't pay enough money to get this kind of stuff that I've got from this church, and I've got the revelations from the Lord and from Bishop and and Sister. Man, they have just been a huge inspiration in my life. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but I just want to say about the marriage thing, how my relationship with God has affected my marriage. Um, total game changer. Total game changer. I mean, we, we've been together 15 years, married for seven. 
Get it right. Hey, I got it right this week. <laughs> she corrected me on the screen. But, uh, man, we've been through every kind of addiction. We've been through, uh, I mean, you name it. We've got a story. Um, every time sister and bishop talk, they tell their story, me and Kirby are hitting each other. That's us. That's us. You know, it, we're so like, it, it, it's just can be nothing other than ordained by the Lord that we do life together in fellowship. But but just being, um, you know, walking with the Lord, it didn't definitely didn't work without the Lord. And then even coming to the Lord still, we had a lot of stuff. Because I know me and us, I'm speaking for probably a lot of us, we were taught to fight with these. I was. I was taught to fight with these and this. My mother and my father, I love them to death. I've Bless God, bless their soul, they're still alive. But those two, if you could commit murder in the worst degree with your mouth, they did it. Oh, bro, every day, every, I mean, it was, it was just, now that I sit back and think about it, it was brutal. I mean, it was brutal for a child to hear that. Like, when I hear that now, somebody even just cussing around their child, it makes me cringe. It makes me, if I slip up and say, and I don't even really say bad words, I say the little light cuss words if I say them. And I'm still, like, convicted underneath the, like, I'm sorry, God, didn't mean to say that, you know. Um, so, the way we were taught, you know, plays a big part in our life. But when we come to Christ, when we serve the Lord, what is 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. That even means the way that we were programmed as children. Yeah. The things that we saw, the things that we heard, the trauma that we went through. And it's, I'm just like, the Lord, I was telling Jesse in the, in the lobby earlier, the Lord has just been unlocking things in my life. In the last three months, like I literally the other night, I laid in the bed and I was like talking to my wife. I was even talking about knucklehead right there. I said, you know what, baby? James is a really good kid. And I was like, just talking about like, man, as hard as I've been on him and as much as it seems like I've got a, a, a target on his back. And I was like really seeing like how good of a, of a man, young man and a child and a person that he is. And we were just talking and we're laying there and I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is weird. It's like, she's like, no, it's not. It's normal. It's normal. And it's like, that's sad. It's that sad that that's not normal to me. You know, wasn't normal to me. But so God is like just leaps and bounds in my marriage and in my relationship. Um, just on communication is so big. And a big one, a big one for me is being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry because a man's anger does not allow him to be right with God. You know, I said for years, so I struggle with anger. I struggle with anger. Well, anger is a byproduct of no self-control. So it's not like, oh, I struggle with anger. So it just is what it is. You know, people say, oh, I'm an alcoholic. I'm... No, you're not. Stop saying that. Don't speak that over your life. That's not who you are. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You don't live there anymore. It's, I'm dealing with something right now that happened six or five before I walked in the door. My own sister, my flesh and blood just cut me to the core, chopped my feet right out from underneath me before I walked in the door. And it's, and it's hard. It's hard. And that's why I said this is, it's just amazing how the spirit just rolls in and flows because I was ready to tuck my tail and run. I was when I saw sister walk in. I was like, oh, yeah, she can take my spot. I'm gone. You know, <laughs> she's like, no, brother, put on your big britches and handle that. <laughs> anyway, so that's for my marriage, um, how God is just through communication, through peace, through self-control, through compassion. Compassion is a big one because he loves us. He first love, you know. Um, second, my kids, especially my youngin. That boy, when they say they're going to give you twice as what you gave your parents, that ain't a lie. Payback. That ain't a lie. Payback some 30, 60, 100 fold on that, especially with that one. But um so where the Lord is, is really where his, my relationship with him and, and being with him has really benefited my relationship with my children. Compassion is a big one. But um, discipline. Man, he, Junior, I'll tell you, last time he got in trouble, he just knew he was done for. He knew he was done for. And I called Bishop and I told him, I said, brother, I'm fixing to wear him out. And I'm going to wear him out. I want to wear him out. I'm going to wear him out unless you tell me not to wear him out. He said, brother, I love you. I was like, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear yes or no. And, uh, man, I called Buddy. I called Bishop. I called Buddy. Our Buddy called me or whatever. And we ended up talking about it. So, so fellowship. Fellowship, godly men, godly women, 
the plug, being plugged in, that's where it's at. That's where it's at because without these people in my walk with God, uh, my wife catches backlash, my children catch backlash, even my employees catch the backlash. And then, like, I let it go that day um, after some wise words from those uh, godly men in my life. And then God spoke to me. He says, do I whoop your tail every time you mess up? I was like, no, sir. You're actually very compassionate, and you're very kind, and you're very loving, and you're very... And I was like, this don't even, this, this don't even feel right. You know, I'm supposed to be like, rah, raging. And um, so... When Junior realized he wasn't getting a whip, and he was pretty, uh, he was like, wait a minute, what's going on, you know? So my kids definitely get a, get a little bit of that, uh, the benefit from my relationship with God. And then, uh, since I've been on the mic a long time, I'm trying to hurry up. Work. Man, work has been a big one for me, especially being self-employed and, and, and running your own operation, trying to make everything come together, things that you haven't done in the last 20 years trying to pull it all together in just a couple of years, you know, owning a business, man, trying to hold it down, trying to make a retirement because I started late in life, you know, started real late in life, started 10 years ago. And, uh, but it's never too late. It's never too late. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior and he comes into your life, he can move mountains as you heard me testify earlier, but learning not to take my problems from work home. That's been a big one. That's been a big one that the Lord has just completely blessed me. And look, a lot of this is, it comes from her. So much wisdom. She has been like dumping on me last couple of weeks. And I'm just like, okay, where that came from? All right, you know, you've been doing, any, doing your little prayers. And, um, but just the benefits and of, of being, you know, a good witness and being an example and being a godly role model to some people. Um, that, that you work around or having people in the hood calling me, what up, preacher? You know, I was like, that actually feels good, you know? <laughs> Especially when, like, hey, the plumber went over there. He's like, hey, I was on Topeka. Uh, OG was asking where the, where his preacher at. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, that, that, that makes you feel really good. Um, you know, seeing some fruits of your labor, seeing how the Lord is just, you know, maneuvering through these these situations and these job sites and through these um these, these conversations that you have and, and moving. And another one is, it's kind of like a testimony. This little young kid, he's like 21 years old. He works with me sometimes. Um, he owns his own business. He cuts grass in Clinton. And this kid's never drank, never smoked. Said he's never heard his father say a cuss word. And like, he's working with me in the hood. He's like, one day he's like, man, I just want to go back to Clinton and cut grass. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, bro, it ain't that bad. But anyway, he called me this morning. So I called him to see if he'd work with me this weekend. And he said, man, I just want to let you know. He said, every night when I lay in bed, he said, I get on my phone and I watch my phone until I fall asleep. He says, and I know that you've been fasting on Facebook for like three months. And he said, uh, so last night, he said, I put my phone down. He said, actually, I put it on the other side of the room. And he said, I began to talk to God. He said, not just asking him for stuff, but I began to thank him. And I began to pray and I began to ask him to fill me. And this is, this is a, a little kid who's been like so good that he felt like he didn't even have a testimony. So he didn't need God. And when he worked with me, I said, brother, that's your testimony. That you didn't go through the trials and the tribulations and the hardships to have a testimony like we've got. But your testimony is just as powerful because you had such a good life and you were such a good guy that you felt like you didn't need God. I said, so every, your, everybody, your testimony is just important and it's good in the next one. But he said, uh, man, I just want to let you know. He said, I did that last night. He said, and so far today, I've had the best day I've ever had in my life. Wow. And all glory to God. So that's my little piece on marriage, children, and work. Amen. Guess I'll crank up next. Uh, I'll just say relationships. I look at relationships. I know we're looking at marriages and children, but I think any relationship is a relationship. It could be a manager at work. It could be bishop. It could be anybody, you know, and the Bible tells us that we need to seek him first, you know, and if we have surrendered ourselves to him, you know, seeking him first is just asking him what to do before we do it. You know, it's, when it comes to marriage, and I'll stay on the marriage topic, because I've been married uh, 14 years. Yesterday was my anniversary. Amen. Amen. 
been been together 20 years yeah, yeah, wow. since I was like 17 you know wow. so so we've been we've been we've been in it we've been at it we've grown <laughs> together you know yeah, we boohoo right you're right so I definitely know but like he's saying I feel the relationship you have with God directly affects the kingdom that you're in the building that you're in you know uh like like He'll direct your path. He'll tell you what to do. He'll quicken you and let you know, hey, something off, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so I'm saying that, uh, like I said, seek him first. Uh, not when you feel like it, but uh, but when when that that'll affect what. Not when you need him, but coming to him, you know, daily, like the Bible tells us yeah, to come sure. to him. Like, you know, so yeah. so when the relationship you have with God, reading through that Bible, I take like the the fruits of the spirit. You got to bring them to remembrance. You know, you got to, especially when you're dealing with your kids, especially when you're dealing with your wives and husbands. I'm going to say that, too, because yeah, we, yeah, we knuckleheads, yeah, too. You, Amen. But I think uh, when when you go to him before you respond to your wife, like I do that all the time. Sometimes my wife gets mad at me because instead of me answering and asking her right back, I'll go take two seconds. Amen. I'll go walk off because I know me, I'm going to respond to my flesh. And I want my spirit man to really respond, but my flesh is quicker than my spirit sometimes, you know? <laughs> but but practicing that uh, teach me, but not just at my house. It'll teach me on that job site. It'll teach me in Walmart lines. It'll teach me different areas of my life. Um, and I must say, not only does it do that, but it creates a, sty- a type of favor that God puts on your life when you when you put him first. I think about David all the time. He was the knucklehead of knuckleheads, right. but he was still an apple of God's eye, you know, and how he was the apple of God's eye because of his relationship with God was so special. It was so intimate. He knew how to apologize. He knew how to repent. He knew how to lay on his face and say, hey, Lord, you know, I know I messed up, but 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 he took the blame. He took it himself saying, Lord, don't don't kill these 70,000 people. I'm the one that did that. On. He took it upon himself. You know, so you yourself really is is either the hold up or the or the or the push. You know, either you're gonna have that relationship with the Lord to correct every other relationship, or you're not, and you're gonna you're gonna fail trying. You know, that's that's everything. I mean, like I can sit here and say all the ways the Lord has changed my life. He's still showing me things, Absolutely. still revealing how to come at my son. You know, how to come at him in a way where I'm not putting him down. He don't feel down. And it's actually encouraging him to play baseball a little better. Yes. You know, uh, you know my even my sister, Bishop, and them, the relationships we have, you got to be open to listen to him first. Yep. And then you got to be patient to hear him. You know, and I'm talking about the Lord. You know, that's that's a real relationship. So what kind of relationship you're having with them is really the question. And and that will affect all the other relationships. I'm going to say something real quick. Get ready because I don't want to do this long. Uh, What he said about the sports thing, and this is a testimony because I went to the first three practices, my son's practice, and, man, I freaking lit him up after every practice. You should have been doing this. Why weren't you doing that? And, and in my mind, I was justifying what I was saying because I know you can run faster than that. I know you can hit harder than that. I know you can. But you're not doing it. You just did it, did it, did And I did that for the first three practices. Man, the Lord spoke to me. He said, dude, get off the gas. Get off the gas. Everybody, I said everybody's too slow. My wife told me when she said, you say everybody's too slow. You ever thought you might be too fast? I'm like, um, so guess what Jeremy has realized in the last year? I'm too fast. Everybody else ain't too slow. I'm too fast. But anyway, the, the point of the story is I have not been to another practice. She goes to every practice. He is excelling at practice from what they tell me. And I just said, you know what? Yeah, I just said, you know what, God? He didn't want to play anymore. He, he hung his head low every time he come off the field. And I just, I just quit going. And I gave it to God, and I gave it to her, and everything's fine. Amen. Amen. I know it's a cliche, but that's like what they say in marriage. Like, if a marriage ain't going to work if you ain't got that three connection, you, your wife, and the Lord. So that's like, you got to apply that to every relationship. Cord, you know, it? like every relationship. Like he said, his son, if he was patient listening, like he was, he said, hey, I'm just going to step back. 
But let the Lord do what he do. And that's what he be waiting on. We got to stop being selfish, yeah. thinking yeah. we know more than the Lord, and ask him to, to, to direct us. Guide my path, Lord, every morning. That's my prayer. Lord, guide my path. If you want me to sit here, I'm going to sit here. Whatever it is, whatever way, it's yours. Amen. 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 Hey, man. Hey, man. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm not married. I'm not married, you know, right now, but thanks be to God, I believe she's on the way. <laughs> Come on, you better praise God with me. I believe she's going to show up any day now. <laughs> yes, amen. 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 Uh, you know, but uh, yes, but I say, man, I'm, I, I'm holding on to hope with two hands. <laughs> I will not let go. <laughs> I'm not talking about world of hope where you rub the little genie body and a little Gina pop out to grant you three wishes. I'm talking about godly hope, which means an earnest, intense expectation or anticipation with a stretched out neck. I'm looking for this show up any day now. You know, uh, so, you know, God bless you all who are married. Uh, I, I was married at one time, but it didn't work. You know, I, I came up, when I came up, I came up in a household now I was raised up in what they call a, a dysfunctional family. What? You know, dysfunctional means just operating outside of the norm. See, it's not normal when you go to bed at night and your stomach, your stomach is touching your back. Don't know where your next meal is going to come from. That's not normal. It's not normal when you watch your, your, your stepdaddy beat your mom. That's that's outside of the norm. That's not normal. And then when you grow up, you and your stepdaddy start tearing it down. We used to tear it down. He'd run toward the closet. I'd run toward the back door, okay. you know. Yeah. So, and I get kicked out, and I stay out for two, three days, you know. I, I ain't no police here, right? But I committed my first own robbery, and I bought, <laughs> I bought, I bought my first car. Jesus drives in I, I, I rode a bicycle 35 miles. And, and, and committed a robbery, bought my first car, and I ended up having to sleep in my car when me and my stepdad to fight behind him beating my mom. When I was small, I, I used to just look at him. And I wanted to help my mom, but I couldn't. Yeah. But when I got older, you see, that, that's dysfunctional. Yeah. You know, uh, then I got sucked up by the streets, you know. I used to sell my, my stepdad to drugs. You know, so I, I, I didn't know how to love. Sure. I, I didn't know how to treat a woman. You know, I thought I, I, thought I did, but, but I really didn't. You know, and, and I ended up giving my life to the Lord years later, you know, and I, I met this girl, and we, we kind of fell in love. And listen to me, when I went to Walmart to get an engagement ring, God spoke to me. Don't do it. <laughs> can, can I just be real? She was short, fine, nice, and pretty. I said, man, come on. You know, you be, you be, you be, you be, you be, you be wanting to say, devil, get deep behind me, you know? You know, you know, but I went against the grain. I bought, I bought the ring anyway, you know, and backslid. I come back, backslid. I come back to the Lord, you know, messing with the drugs, you know, cocaine, all that, man. And one thing led, led it to another, and it cost me 20 years in prison. I spent, I did 20 years in prison. Mm. I've been out almost two years now. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 20 years. Yeah. I, I discharged from hunt November 22. But now I'm ready. Now I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for marriage. You know, uh, I, I believe I grew up in prison. Come on, bro. Some of y'all looking at me like a cow at a new gate. I grew up in prison, right. you know. I mean, I learned so much in, in, in prison. Absolutely. And, and now, you know, I know in my Noah that I'm ready right now. I'm, I'm ready. You know, back then I wasn't ready, you know, and, and man, God has shown me, shown me so, so much, you know, uh, and like my, the man of God said, you know, concerning relationships, you know, uh, there are many relationships, but there's not many good relationships, you know, and a re our relationship is based upon how we are connected. You know, uh, and we know our, our relationship with God is what? It, we're connected by who? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the, you know, so, you know, so he, so we're connected to, to the Father through him. When we give our lives to the Lord, we enter into what? Our relationship. 
But what are we doing to enhance that relationship? You know, like husband and wife. Sometimes you be married, but yet you don't even know your partner. That's right. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And sadly, but you, needless to say, when we, when we, when some of us get to heaven, the Lord is going to be a stranger to him. Mm-hmm. We're not, we not going to even know him. Why? How do you know somebody? A stranger is somebody who you have not come to know. And how do you know somebody? You have to spend time with them. That's right. Talk to them. Amen. You know? But he will be a stranger to some of us. You know? Even though we've given our life to him, but he's, we're still gonna be, he's still going to be a stranger to us. You know? And I believe that God created people and, and, and humanity to be in relationship with him first. Yes. Then with one another. Amen. And marriage, you know, friends, you know, with, with, with everybody, you know. Amen. And there are benefits in being in relationship with God. Show me a family who's really serving God, and I'll show you a blessed family. Yeah. We call it family with benefits. You know that family is going to raise their children up in what? In the ways of the Lord. They might, they might Depart from them. but they come, they're coming back. You know, though, I mean, that's, so there are, are awesome benefits in, in, in uh, having a re- a, a godly relationship, yeah. you know, and, and this is what I believe. I believe a wife is a reflection of her husband. That's why it's imperative, imperative for the husband to take the lead role in the family. She's going she's gonna to watch the husband closely. She'll find herself praying like the husband, you know, worshiping God like the husband, reading a Bible. Now, she might not let you know, but on the cool behind her back, man, I'm going to do what he do. Yeah. You see? Yes. But, but, but if he get to slipping and tripping, she ain't going to follow that. But you show me a godly man who's taking this, his, his role, that wife is going to be a reflection of him. And our kids are going to be a reflection of what? Of our parents. They mimic. They're going to do what they see. You know, uh, 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 and, and kids, children, I believe, they pay more attention to what they see than what they hear. You know, and you remind, you remember Jesus and the Pharisees? He said, "Do what they say, but don't do what they do." <laughs> you know, because <laughs> they were hypocritical. You know, them Pharisees. You know, I, I, I believe that's why, I, like I said, I believe it's imperative for the the husband to take the lead role, and that way, if he's doing so, man, he's gonna lead his his whole family within the ways of the Lord. This, this is what I believe. I believe family is like a five hundred piece puzzle. Listen to me. I believe family is like a 500-piece puzzle. And I believe this. If one of those pieces are missing, guess what? The puzzle is not going to be complete. The family will not be complete. That family is not going to be complete until that original piece be put back into its right original place. Then the family is complete again. And I said that to say this here. We have to know and understand that. Whatever we do, whatever we say is not only going to affect us, yeah. but it's going to affect everybody that's connected to us. Right, Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Family, like I, I look at it like it's a 500-piece puzzle. Amen? I'm out with that. Miss Pat, before you start, I just wanted to say uh, one, one thing for, just real quick. Um, you know, like, when, when it comes to like marriage and things, and and especially doing it the way God wants you to do it, it it actually qualifies you for different things, you know. Right. And like when you do things like my marriage, like the Bible says, when a man finds a wife, it actually qual is it's, it's a good thing because it's it's the the good thing is the favor God sees in the marriage, it qualifies you for that type of favor, that type of blessing, you know. So when my kids obey me. At their father or mother, it qualifies them for longer life. That's right. That's right. When they disobey them, it qualifies them for shorter life. You know, so when you, like I said, when you follow that Bible, when you follow what he tells you to do in those relationships, it has special benefits. It really does. You know. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's my turn. <laughs> Yeah, it's my turn. You're right. Turn, turn yours off. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Huh? Aren't we some blessed people in here, whether married, not married, divorced, widowed, whatever the case might be? Amen. We're in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we fill with the Holy Ghost. Huh? All our sins are, are wiped away. Amen. We have purpose and a divine destiny in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Well, just a, a few notes here. Um, one, uh, I, I was married uh, in my 20s 
and th that didn't work out. Um, uh, I'll see if the Lord wants me to go into that. He gave a, a good, uh, some good description of some of the things uh, that happened with with my family, the place where I grew up. And uh, I, I didn't grow up with much respect for my father, uh, and so it affected other relationships, right? Amen. Look, one of the things the Lord had me to put down here was that uh, find the love of the father before you uh, go dealing with a husband or a wife. The love of the father. The love of the father. Because then uh, otherwise we'll have someone, you will be expecting them to do something that they are ill-equipped to do. To uh, fix you, to make you happy, to... I don't know all the other words for it, but uh, they say complete you. No, you come as complete as you can be in Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. The other part of this uh, seems to be preparation. Why are we waiting for these husbands and wives? I didn't, I wasn't thinking about uh, marriage. I was on a baseball field. <laughs> And uh, I caught a softball, and this guy caught my hand. It was bleeding. And I, we didn't have the word prophetic at the time in our vocabulary, but uh, he was a piano player in the church, so I think we thought we fell in love, and then uh, that was a prophetic moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, long story short, along the way we got married, uh, both with terrible backgrounds in terms of uh, being able to put this thing together uh, right, you know. We didn't know it was Jesus that was gonna put it together right, right? We didn't know that uh, we're in the kingdom of God and that the Bible is the constitution of the kingdom and that that is the word that solves all the difficulties and differences of opinion and that kind of thing. Uh, with preparation, you know, it's preparing ourselves first spiritually and then in practical kinds of ways, right? Taking advantage of opportunities and stuff, fulfilling some of your, your dreams. Uh, you miss some things that you want to do and then maybe get married and expect to be, it's, a, it's, it's different then. Don't, don't do that that way because you wreck up things. You know what I'm saying? There are all kinds of opportunities, you know, unless the Lord and the Holy Spirit's guiding you to, to submit and to marry at a certain time and that kind of thing. But a lot of times I know people get married and then um, they realize they wanted to do some things. You know, oh, I wanted to be a a uh, helicopter pilot or something. Oh, you don't have made two babies, you got a marriage. I don't know how that's gonna work. Maybe it will work. <laughs> Maybe God will cause it to work. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. Because um, we could come in with expectations that are unrealistic in a marriage. So he mentioned here the thing of uh, find the love of the Father. We find God's love in our uh, intimate relationship with him. And uh, that, is, that is so very precious. It's just precious for us in whatever way we live, whether we're married, single, whatever the case, that is what we're after, having him first, putting him first, and not being in a situation where uh, the Lord says, you know, depart from me, you mm. evildoer. I never knew you. I never knew you. So for all relationships, and then we're able to give uh, toward other relationships in the love of Christ, right? Yeah, because I came into this and I'm like, God, look, I, you know, already know this. Like, I don't love these people the way Jesus, Jesus love them. I just don't. Now, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to try to make it. I'm not, I, I just don't know how to do this. And so the Lord helps us, right? The first part is that mission and not... Um, a pretense, um, but where uh, marriage is concerned, I remarried at uh, at 40, and it was a marriage um, uh, where God was the matchmaker, I would say. Uh, my husband, Van, I met him at 19. I was a college student. We both went off, lived our own lives. We loved each other as friends. 
But at a certain point in my life, uh, later on, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm sick of this dating. I'm not living right. I'm ready to settle down. And within some time period, I was on the phone with Van, and the Lord said, this is your husband. So from the testimony, the, the thing of what God has for you is for you. Mm. Yeah? Mm. What God has for you is for you. One of the songs says, um, and the Lord knows when it's time to turn the page in our, uh, our life stories. And so um, just a couple of other things. Where healing is concerned, don't drag all that garbage into the marriage. Be serious about trying to be as whole. He asked, will thou be made whole? All of us, will thou be made whole? Because you have two people coming with their histories into this thing, and you're heading for a train wreck or something if nobody is taking the time to go before Jesus and let Jesus work on us, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. And so it's, it's, it's really important also to honor each other, appreciate each other, and remember why we became a couple in the first place. Amen? Amen. Be forgiving. Be gracious. And it will always feel almost maybe like you are doing more than always you're doing more than the other person that's all right the lord will honor that the lord will honor you when you honor him that's right yes you mentioned favor that's right that's right and it's a beautiful exchange the marriage according to the word represents uh, christ in the church and we uh, present ourselves as a couple, a married couple. We're doing a covenant relationship, not a contract. My first marriage was a contract. I probably want to get out of the house. And we think we fell in love. And so, okay. And then you have a backup plan. It just doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 21 or 22, whatever I was. But a covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus in the, in the middle of this thing. Amen? Amen. Not a, a contract relationship. That kind of parallels the last point, uh, the church, when we have church membership. Being a member, hey, that's cool, but we want to change some of this verbiage and as a result change the meaning of things, what we mean. We come into a covenant relationship with each other in the church. That's different than, if you're a church member, you can leave and go as you want. You're like, I shook his hand and said, yeah, I want to be here. And soon as something hits, you know, I'm out. Come on. Uh, I'm out. But a covenant relationship means the Lord is in that. Yeah. And a lot of our stuff should be spirit-led. We should discern by the spirit certain things, right? Yeah. And for uh, women as well as men, we shouldn't be desperate to uh, have someone in our lives. We should be desperate for the Lord. They that hunger and thirst after me, they shall be filled. Amen. No better plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know it. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you hope and a future, not to harm you. Who's, is somebody next? No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for the marriages then. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we lift up all the marriages, not just in this house, but all over the place. Yeah. Everybody who's trying to do this thing according to your way and your will in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the enemy off of uh, the marriages and causing division, strife, accusation. It says he's the accuser of the brethren. And there is the uh, 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 intention to destroy the marriage so that the, ch the marriage doesn't work, the children end up being crazy, they can't fulfill their goal, the husband can't fulfill his goal in Christ, our divine destiny, which is to advance the kingdom of God in Jesus' name, amen? Uh, he said he would want that his glory, the knowledge of his glory would be all over the earth. We are to carry that as a husband, a wife, a couple in marriage before the people there's a community that's looking. And so we thank you, Lord, that you would strengthen the marriages. Let the husband take his place, the wife her place. We come against any feeling of feeling uh, su uh, 
subordinate or insecure or inferior as a wife. We cast that down in the name of Jesus. The husband and the wife are, are, are equally loved, equally treasured, equally pressured, precious, equally loved before God in the name of Jesus. We're talking about roles, different roles in the, in the house, in the marriage. And so we thank you, Father, those who are waiting for a spouse, that you are giving them a direction and guidance, Lord, that they're allowing themselves to yield before you so you can give direction and guidance, and then strengthen them to be able to follow, uh, follow instructions in Jesus' name. We thank you for the godly marriages that already exist, Lord, and that, the, you know, these people, they stand up and you could, you could, you smell Jesus on them. There's an aroma on them. There's a way that they look at each other, the way that they regard each other in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, we ask that uh, we, we speak healing to those who've had painful marriages, divorces, and uh, children have been hurt through marriages, Lord. We release your healing. We release the salve of Jesus, the, the healing that only comes from uh, being with the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that the godly marriage, covenant marriage, shall go forth to honor you as the image of Jesus and the church. In, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you that the children in marriages that have not uh, done so well, that their little spirits are not taking in some of the dysfunction, the hurt, the pain, the sorrow, um, we thank you that they're covered by the blood of Jesus, Lord. We bless your holy name. You're a good, good father and a good, good God. You continue to help us as we mess up and you straighten us out and you, you don't throw us away. So we don't throw people away either. We follow your example, Jesus. You're the model. You're the God man, 100% each way. And we love you and bless you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hi, is this on? Okay. Listen, uh, I wanted to say this. Uh, may, maybe there's somebody here or somebody online, you're watching, you be like, yeah, that's good. Uh, when both, both uh, individuals are, are, are walking with the Lord, you, you may be a wife, but your husband is not walking with God. Yeah. Don't want anything to do with God. Yeah. Or you might be a husband and your wife doesn't want anything to do with God. Yeah. You say, what do you do? Yeah. You love him. Yeah. You give God a chance to work in that marriage because your walk with God will affect the is. other spouse. The Reminds me of a true story. Can I tell you a story? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can we stop? <laughs> Let's. Right. The apostle Paul, as he was under the inspiration of the Spirit, he said in the first Corinthians 13, we all call it the love chapter, mm -hmm. he said, love never fail it. That's right. It will always win, even when it looked like it's not. Amen. Love will never fail. Did he just say that? Did God just inspire Paul to say that? Or did God mean what he said? That was this man and God. They were living in England. They didn't want nothing to do with God. But his wife had a powerful relationship with God. Amen. This man didn't want nothing to do with God. Matter of fact, he told his wife, if you go down there, again, messing with them crazy Christian folks, I'm going to lock you outside. You're going to sleep outside all night. So guess what she did? She went on down with them crazy Christian folks. Yeah. Quote, unquote. So when, he, when she came back home, guess what he did? He locked, had the door locked. She slept outside all night on the screen porch. Now, mind you now, one of y'all ladies, if that would have happened to one of you all, Lord help us. <laughs> but here's, here's the revelation. The next morning she got up, he opened the door, guess what she said? Good morning, good morning, honey. What do you want for breakfast? Oh, man. Messed them up. Yeah. And guess what he said? Lord, have mercy. I got to have what you got. Come on. Come on. I want what you got. Yes. I locked you outside all night. You didn't come in here fussy, cussing. You want asking me what I want for breakfast? The love of God. Yes, amen. He became one of the leading healing evangelists. Yes. 
Yes. In the world. I mean, Smith Wigglesworth is who I'm talking about. Yes, wow. yes. Raised 20 some people from the dead in his ministry, including his wife. She died. He took her course, threw it up against the wall three times. The third time, her spirit came back into her body. She looked at him. What are you doing? He said, I'm hungry. I'm not ready for you to go yet. Go fix me something to eat. <laughs> Study his life. Powerful man of God. He was so powerful, so sold out to God, he didn't allow no other book in this house but the Bible. No reading material, nothing but the Bible. Sold out to God. And what caused it? Love. Amen. What, hey, honey, what do you want for breakfast? Yes, indeed. Locked outside all night. Amen. 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 That's powerful. So you love on her. Now, I'm not telling you to stay in a, in a marriage, you know, if, if you're getting beat and, and everything like that. No. You run with a police escort, you know. But, <laughs> but, you, but you give God, a, that's with everything. Sometimes we, are, we, we, we use God as a last resort. Oh, true. When everything else has failed, then we try God. Yeah. Well, he should have been first. You wouldn't, it wouldn't have cost you all that money. Yeah. Your marriage would have been spared, probably. Right. Your kids would have been probably got off drugs. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And we learn to put him first before anything else. That's Don't right. be like the woman with the issue. For 12 years, she spent everything she had. Went broke, had to file chapter 11. But one touch, she didn't touch him, she just touched a piece of his thread. One touch of him caused her to get everything she had been trying to get for the last 12 years. One touch. So, you know, Amen. just remember that love, man. Love, love on him. And, and, and God, see, when you do it God's way, you give God access to move into that situation. That's right. When you do it his way, now I can move. But if you constantly talking about him, downgrading him or her, you know, you ain't going to never be nothing. I'm tired of you. You drunk. You know, you can't do that. That's right. And expect God to move in that situation. That's right. God be sitting back like this. Wait. Until you Wait. You done yet, son? You done yet? Wait. <laughs> but when you give it to God and you just, you just love on him. And watch what God do. Amen. See, it's, it's something about believing God, man, that, man, you'll be surprised what he can do in five minutes compared to what we can do in a lifetime. Oh, my God. Yes. If you just do it his way. Yes, God. Amen. 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 All right, guys, let's pray it out. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, the name yes. that's above every name, we thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords in our life. Father, we just thank you for the word that was brought forth tonight. Father God, we just pray that it would fall on good, that it fell on good ground, and that we'll be able to apply in every area of our life that it needs. Father God, that you would give us that revelation, what to apply where, and that you would continue to send your spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us and help us to be the men and women of God that you have called and created us to be, Father. We love you. We honor you. We bless your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody Amen. said, Amen. Amen. You can join our social media community, watch full broadcasts, sign up for our daily devotional, and much more at miracleplace.org.